So in today's lecture, we will start with our last topic, which is calculus. Uh, calculus. Let me tell you, it is just the introduction of the <clears throat> different things. I mean, in the calculus, there is basically derivatives, integrations, which you have already studied. But uh, now, what we are going to look at is several variable derivatives and integration okay So our uh, ultimate aim is to solve double integrals to solve triple integrals double integrals and triple integrals So by the time we start with double and in triple integrals, there are a lot of things. Those are to be studied first of all. And without that, going directly for double and triple integrals uh, will be quite uh, difficult. And you won't be able to do any of those integrations if we are not doing what is partial derivatives if we are not studying the curve tracing or the cone cylinder and sphere and of course some basic tools of integration So once we are done with all of these things, then we will be able to do the double and triple integrations uh, properly. You will be able to understand what you are doing and <clears throat> why you are doing it. Okay. So uh, of course, this course in this course, what we have is just the introduction of the calculus. So what I will do is. I will uh, just take some of the parts of partial derivatives, some parts of partial derivative. Then we will uh, also try to identify some important curves. Uh, we will see how do you give the equation for cone, sphere, and cylinder. And then we will look at some of the basic tools, those are required. Uh, I'll try to make it a lot easier for you uh, to not make it uh, I mean too much complicated so that you are not able to understand anything. So uh, let's just start with the partial derivatives. Uh, 
uh, in your twelve standard, what we had was we have y is equal to the function of x. Then what we were doing was differentiating with respect to x. Okay. So what do you mean by this derivative here? What do you mean by the derivative in that case? The rate of change of y with respect to x. The rate of change of y with respect to x. So what we do was we made a small change delta x be small increment in x. Be small increment in x. Okay. And with respect to this small increment in x, what do we find out is the change in y. So you are studying, what you are studying is, for a small change in x, what will be the change in the value of y? That is nothing but the derivative. In this case, very important point is, x is independent variable. independent variable whereas this y is dependent variable now what i will do is i'll define function of two variables function of two variables so how do i define it a function consisting of two independent two independent and one dependent variable. That is, if I write down z is equal to f of xy, okay, if I write down z is equal to f of xy, how many independent variables are there? x and y. So here I have, uh, I mean, opportunity or possibility I should say uh, that if I make a change delta x I can study delta z okay so with respect to small change in one of the independent variable I am looking at the change in z so as you can see this is not the complete derivative I am looking at one of the independent variable not both of them okay so such type of derivative is nothing but the partial derivative. Similarly, what I can do is I can make a small change delta y. And with respect to this small change, I can look at the change in the value of z. So with respect to small change in y, I am looking at the change in the dependent variable z. So such type of derivatives are the partial derivative. Similarly, I can define function of three variables similarly. Function of three variables. u is equal to f of x, y, z. So you make a small change in x and you look at the change in y. Okay. Similarly, small change in y, you can look at the small change in z. Small change in, uh, sorry, uh, small change in z, small change in u. So 
this is what is the partial derivative. So these are the functions, two types of uh, functions that we are going to deal with. So what is a partial derivative now? So what we have is let z is equal to f of x, y, then partial derivative of z, then partial derivative of z with respect to x is the derivative of z with respect to x treating y as constant. And it is denoted by, it is denoted by del z by del x or z x or f suffix x. <laughs> Similarly, the partial derivative with respect to y will be x similarly x constant exactly. Similarly, partial derivative of z with respect to y is derivative of z with respect to y treating x as constant. is denoted by and is denoted by del z by del y or z suffix y or f suffix y. We'll just look at the simple rules while we are finding out the derivatives. Should be able to understand the rules. So partial derivative with respect to x of okay. So before let me just make a statement. Let u is a function of x, y, z, and k comma n are constants in the first one with respect to x of u plus minus v. v is also the function of x, y, z. So what will happen? Differentiate separately. 
differentiate separately all the rules for your derivative that you have studied in your 12th standard those are going to be the same del u by del x plus minus del u by del x similar thing for partial derivative with respect to y and z second partial derivative with respect to z of k times u constant will come out constant will come out u with respect to z third partial derivative with respect to y of f of x Yes, Akshi. Aditya. Actually, the x dot t of x. Okay. Kushi. Ritisha. Vaishnavi. Aaron Part Aditya, what is the definition of partial derivative with respect to y? What is it? Means x is constant. Right? So derivative with respect to y when treating x as constant. X is constant. So what will be the function of x? It will be constant or it will be variable? Uh, it will be variable, I guess. X is a constant. So you yes. If I write. 5 is a constant, so 5 square plus 5 is again a constant? Yes. Yes. So what will be the answer here? Constant. What is Zero. the derivative of constant? 0. 0. Yes. Because they are independent variables, so they shouldn't affect the other variables. Exactly. So if I am taking partial derivative with respect to y of a function of x, it will become 0. In the similar manner, partial derivative with respect to x of a function of y will also become 0. Third. With respect to f of x, y, z, raised to n Aroshri uh, so will it be n times uh, f x y z raised to n minus 1 Z 
raised to n minus 1. Okay. Anyone wants to make a change in this? There was a chain rule. So chain rule says that if I substitute this complete thing as say m, m raised to n, n into m raised to n minus 1 by chain rule, partial derivative of f with respect to x. So the same chain rule that you studied for function of one variable in your 12th standard, the same thing will work here. Fourth one with respect to z of tan f of x, y, z. Sir, uh, uh, sec square f of x, y, z. Sec square f of x, y, z. Uh, delta uh, delta f upon delta z. Delta f by delta z. Fine. That's correct. Fifth. Partial derivative with respect to x of sine inverse f of x, y, z. Sir, 1 upon under root uh, 1 minus f of uh, x, y, z bracket square. Yes, to that function. And then delta f upon delta x. Exactly. Okay, so uh, I think now whatever partial derivative you need, I mean, you can actually find it out because one thing is clear. All the rules that you have studied for derivatives are applicable here just one thing you have to keep in mind that when you are taking partial derivative with respect to x you have to treat other variables as constant okay example find partial derivative of u with respect to x and partial derivative of u with respect to y. First one, u is equal to ax square plus 2hxy plus by square. Yes. Uh, sir, so first it will be uh, A will stay as the constant, then 2x delta. Wait, wait, wait. Minus. So the x will be constant, right? So uh, you are taking partial derivative with respect to x. Shivani, you are treating yeah, x yeah. as 
सो अदर वेरिएबल्स आर कांस्टेंट सो एस माइनस 2ax 2ax 2hy 2hy plus by square plus by square is it no 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 zero sorry zero yeah what you are doing here is you are taking partial derivative with respect to x so what will happen is let me go step by step over here uh, others who are having problem they'll be clear with this so first of all you are taking partial derivative with respect to x so this will be ax square plus 2hxy by square first one a is a constant that will come outside 2x plus now you are taking partial derivative with respect to x so y will become constant 2h is also a constant so 2hy partial derivative of x with respect to x being 1 plus partial derivative with respect to x of y square when you are taking partial derivative with respect to x y becomes constant so it is 0 so what so we have is this with b that's why it became zero right the last term no y is a constant b will come outside how do you take the derivative yeah yeah okay yes yes u is equal to x raised to y Plus y raised to x. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We oh, we need to find out partial derivative of u with respect to y also. Yes, anyone? Other than minus or two h x plus two b y. Two h x plus two b y. Yes. For the other one, partial derivative of u with respect to x. Someone else. इस आदित्य नॉट देर डिस्कनेक्टेड शिवानी यस टेल मी पार्शियल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ यू विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स वाई 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 X raised to y minus one. Y minus one. And that would be zero. Sure. No, not sure. Not sure. Y is a constant. Constant raised to x. Sir, x plus. <clears throat> Y y y raised to x into ln y. Y raised to x into ln y. Anyone else who need wants to try this? Sir, 
x raised to y log of uh, x x raised to y log of x plus plus x y raised to oh, sorry x y raised to x minus 1 exactly okay so these are the so now you are able to find out the partial derivatives for the different functions the next thing we need to look at is curves different curves that we have okay so we'll just recall the things that you have studied in your 12th standard first of all uh we'll try to explore the another different curves so the first one what is this what is it circle why why is it a circle because uh, <clears throat> Uh, every variable has the power two, so it's symmetric about the x and y axis. Okay. You are missing on uh, missing one of the basic definition that you have studied in the previous classes, and depending on that definition, you declared that this is a circle. i'll name the definition locus what is a locus what do you mean by locus so the definition was like this the set of points set of points satisfying a given condition satisfying a given equation say is called the locus of the equation so what equation do we have x square plus y square equal so for time being what i will consider is x square plus y equal to 1 so what i have to do is i need to look at all the points which are going to satisfy this equation x square plus y square equal to 1 the point 1 is like yes so it has to be on my in my set only point okay and when you get these point circle the way you derive this equation is you take an arbitrary point on the circle xy the condition of this is that this point xy should be at distance unit with okay and by using this formula you get but uh, the for if the the x y whenever we do the equation you say that it is a circle next one y square is equal to 4ax parabola 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 
opening the web services. How will you solve double, triple if you are not able to identify the parabola opening towards positive, negative, X or Y? Which X is? So, so what's the question? X axis. Opening towards? Positive X axis. So if you draw the diagram of this, the parabola is like this, right? So it is opening towards positive x axis. So there are four cases to this y square is equal to minus 4x. When you put the negative sign, it will open towards negative, negative, negative x. X square is equal to 4by. This will open towards positive y axis. Positive y. Minus 4 by negative y axis negative y axis now my uh, question is i'll give you one equation say x square is equal to by or 2y simply a one simple observation is that yes this is a parabola right and it is opening towards which axis x square is equal to 2y it is opening towards y axis positive y axis y axis so whichever variable is having power 1 the parabola opens towards that axis so you can see that in the first two cases, the power of x is 1. So it is opening towards positive x, uh, I mean positive or negative x axis. In the other two equations, uh, it is opening towards uh, the positive or negative y axis. Now, what happens if I do this? y square is equal to x plus 3. What I have done? I have added 3 to x. Can you draw y square equal to x? y square equal to x is the parabola opening towards positive. Okay, let me just x make a small thing. Uh, I'll make a small change over here. I'll write down y is equal to x square. So it will open towards positive y axis. Now what I'm saying is, I'm doing a small change here. I'm taking x square is equal to y minus 3. What is happening? What will happen to the graph of this? Sir, on the y axis in the negative side. Negative side. Uh, okay. The parabola has shifted three units up. Did yeah. shifted three this units shifted up. Upwards by three units. Exactly. So when you add and subtract numbers there, so what what is going to happen in the graph? It will just get shifted. It will be uh, since it is y minus three. So you can see that at the point 3 comma 0, 0 comma 3, sorry. 0 comma 3 satisfies this equation. Okay. And at y is equal to 3, the x becomes 0. So the graph for this is going to be like this. Okay. If I add some number, then it will shift. 
downwards okay so this kind of manipulations you should be able to do so just keep in mind that when numbers are added or subtracted then the graph gets shifted and if it is multiplied what will happen y is equal to x square and y is equal to 3x square think over it so small remark i will adding or addition or subtraction subtraction third one why go to x This is the line. Two lines actually. so uh, previously while uh, solving the partial uh, sorry probability we came across this definition and it said that uh, mod x is going to be x if x is simply greater than 0 and it is going to minus x if x is less than 0 we saw this and if you draw the graph of y is equal to x for all x greater than 0 it is like this and minus x if x is less than 0 y equal to minus x it is again a straight line and for negative side it is like this so this is the graph okay so circle parabola fourth one x square upon a square plus y square upon b square equal to 1 this is hyperbola hyperbola ellipse ellipse sorry ellipse ellipse yes ellipse x square upon a square nantar and thoda so lecture chalu x square upon a square minus y square upon b square equal to 1 x square is minus y square upon b square equal to one hyperbola. These are the basic things, but uh, there can be simple equations. Say equal to one by You should be able to identify what is this by uh, looking at the point. Okay, you have to be very good at the observations if you want to draw this. Y equal to one by x. Well, how will it look like?
at zero it tends to infinity and at infinity it at tends zero, to it zero. so infinity. so how will it look like uh, uh, yes and uh, like an exponential graph a curve what's the mm -hmm. far end of x-axis so uh, look there are simple observations that you do okay so if you want to understand these uh, you can uh, look at the lecture have it uploaded uh, linear algebra and so you will understand how to observe the equations and draw the curve. You don't go through all the lectures there. Just watch the first lecture. That is the most basic one and it is enough for your uh, course. So what will happen is as you take x tends to infinity as x tends to infinity the value of y is becoming zero okay so at infinity this should be like this at x equal to one y will become one right now as y tends to infinity as y tends to infinity what is happening x will become zero right so the value of x is zero on y axis so it will go near to y axis this happens in the uh, for the values of x which are greater than zero what will happen if the value of x is less than zero so as x tends to minus infinity still the value of y becomes zero and as y tends to negative infinity the value of x becomes zero so this kind of structure that you get what is it called rectangular hyperbola okay so this is recommended uh, i'll recommend that you go and look at the lecture uh, that will be very helpful sir we just need to see the first lecture of curve tracing right yes in the playlist of uh, integral calculus okay fine so that's all for today in the next